Welcome back. So we're going to go ahead and begin chapter 12. And here we will talk about advanced class concepts. And mainly we will focus on constructors, basically objects initial state upon being created. There are three basic rules. You have rule of zero, rule of three, and the rule of five. They are going to seem a little bit abstract to you when I, once, as I explain them now, but you'll see through a set of through a series of examples how this will actually look like. So you have a rule of zero that says that the user does not define any constructors or destructors or destructors, nor assignment operators. That is basically that would be our class date, uh, if you remember. Anyway, the rule of three says that if we define a copy constructor, then we will probably need to define destructor and assignment operator as well. Rule of five, on the other hand, is an extension of the rule of three that involves move constructor and move assignment operator. And don't worry if you didn't understand these three rules to the furthest of extents, uh, just follow along the tutorial and eventually it will or it should become rather clear. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into constructors. There are special parts of a class. Oh, by the way, before we do, feel free to check these three rules out on the net as well. Uh, you have definitions for them and I feel that it would be not be a bad idea just to read about them a little bit. Just use your favorite search engine, type in rule of zero C++ and classes C++, and you will find a ton load of material there. And the same goes for the rule of three and the rule of five. Don't go too extensively through the documentation, really no need. Just read the basic definitions and try to understand them a little bit better. But as I said, if you just follow along through the examples, it should be fine as well. Anyway, Constructors, special parts of a class that will be I'm basically that will be executed when the class is instantiated. That is, when the user creates a variable of that class's type. We've done this, uh, we've done this before, so nothing nothing I mean we have done this to an extent before in any case. So the general syntax for a constructor would be like this. Uh, class, and then you would have some parameters here. So this is the name of the constructor. That is, the name of the constructor is the same as the name of the class. So the name of the class and the name of the constructor, they're pretty much, they're the same. Let me just go ahead and show you what I mean by this to the fullest of extent so that you can actually see it in the real code and not in the pseudocode. So we're just going to delete this and type in class and we shall name this one dummy class. And down below, let's go ahead and type in public. And then the constructor should be the constructor should be public. Dummy class, and there we go. So the name of the constructor is the same as the name of the class. You see, the name of the constructor is the same as is the name of the class. Okay, so the this constructor basically has no parameters. Even though, it, I mean, this is just a, the simplest, the most basic example, so it has no parameters of whatsoever. I'm just going to type in std colon colon c out and uh, something stupid. Let's type in hello constructor here. There you go. That should be sufficient. And L. Hurrah. And now down in the main, we can go ahead and type in dummy. Uh, 
dummy class dummy semicolon so this is declaring a variable dummy of type dummy class so you have a variable dummy and its type is dummy class this declaration will call the constructor the exa this example in particular will output this line here and let's just go ahead and see how that works out for us uh, build and run there you go hello constructor here simple simple as that no nothing too complicated we can see that we can take uh, some action like just print this out or do some sort of initialization of particular variables uh, upon the creation of the object so that way we can get an object that suits our needs as soon as it is created so let's go ahead and see a uh, let's let's go ahead and see a correct program that is similar to the previous one but it does not do what it is expected of it so if we if we like do this and if we run the program like this we won't get any output let me just show it to you that that is so indeed you see there is nothing out on the screen now why why is this what is the problem there doesn't seem to be any errors the program is technically correct uh, the problem are the parentheses basically when declaring the variable uh, dumb when declaring the variable basically so this dummy here this is not a variable of the type dummy class this is a function prototype that accepts nothing but returns a dummy class so function prototype that accepts nothing but returns dummy class the example above is basically this one uh, with this with the with the fun the one with the function not the not the previous one is also called NVP most for most vexing phrase and this is the most trivial example of MVP uh, MVP feel free to look it up on the net in terms of definitions a little bit more not mandatory but if you want just uh, some extra knowledge that's written down it should be a little bit easier to understand if not just follow through the examples I'm gonna do demos anyway so uh, we're gonna have public and then it's gonna be dummy class and we're gonna have a printout here and guess what down below I'm gonna type in dummy uh, dummy class and then I shall type in int parameter I don't know some some integer shall be passed to this and we're gonna do yet another printout just because they are the simplest things that we can use for demos no other reason really okay second constructor here um, and we're gonna set this to equal now we're gonna need to insert the parameter or the integer that is being passed and it's going to be std and del okay so now we can go ahead and create another one but before we do we're going to need to like delete these and we shall name this one dummy one and let's go ahead and select this copy it and paste it into the next line and change this into two but you see two shall have seven so this shall pass the parameter seven so this is calling the second constructor and passing seven as an argument and this is calling the first constructor how do we know which one we're, how does the machine know which one is being called 
well, this one takes a parameter, this one doesn't. Obviously, we're passing a parameter here, so it's going to grab this one. And if you don't pass a parameter, it's going to grab this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and build and run. And it says, hello, constructor here, and second constructor here, par parameter equals 7. Simple as that, no big deal there. We can add as many constructors at we, as we wish, but the number or the type of parameters has to, the, has to be different. So it's either the number or the type of parameters has to be different or both. Just like in functions when you are overloading them. We can, we can basically add uh, two attributes and a method to our class. So let's make this a little bit more complex. But just so you know, these constructors, uh, the same rules for overloading applies, the same rule that applies for overloading in functions pretty much applies here. Uh, you need to give them like different parameters of type. You need to give either more or less. Either way, uh, this need this part here where the parameters are passed to the const where the parameters are passed to the constructor needs to be need needs to be different from one constructor to the next. You cannot have two constructors with the same structure in terms of parameters. That would be very unwise. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's go outside of public and uh, let's go ahead and declare two attributes. So it shall be int. We're gonna create two attributes for ourselves. It's gonna be dummy attr one, and that's gonna be an integer. And we're gonna have a char. So char shall be dummy attr two, and. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and enter here space colon space dummy ttr1 this is gonna be we're gonna set this to be zero and dummy attr2 we're gonna go ahead and set this to be I don't know e so let's let's put it let's leave it to be e so we have we have this constructor now also is initializing these two attributes to zero and e. Uh, initializing basically dummy attribute one to the value. Let's go. Let's go ahead and change how the second one works and initialize the dummy attribute one to the value of the parameter that is passed to the function here, to the constructor here. My apologies there. Let's go ahead and type in semicolon. Let's just separate these so you can see things a bit better. Very important to keep it clear and neat. Okay, there we go. So dummy attr1, and this is gonna be param, our variable, and this shall be dummy attr2 and I don't know we can initialize this to something else we can be a character p excellent so now let's go ahead and create a method to, for a printout down below there shall be void print and it's gonna be const this is not going to be changing anything. It's just a printout. And let me go ahead and copy these two. Well, actually, no, I can't because I didn't set up copy paste between my VMs. STD colon colon C out. And it shall be dummy ATT R1 equals dummy underline attr1 std and l okay let's go ahead and copy this line so we don't have to go through the painstaking process of typing it all out and just change a few things basically change this to two and change this to two simple as a dat and there we go class end the class shall end there.
Okay, now we can go back into main and have a look around there to see what can we what can we do. So we can leave this one. We're gonna call the first we're gonna call the first constructor where the demi attribute will be equal to zero and demi attribute two will be equal to E. And then we can go ahead and create a printout. So dummy one dot uh, print. Yep, there we go. So it's a uh, this this is going to call this line. We'll call this method from uh, dummy class. Okay, so let's separate this, and now we're gonna be calling. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and call the second constructor. And I don't know. We'll change this to I don't know one hundred. Really doesn't matter, and we shall dummy two dot print, and there you go. Let's leave it like that. I'll just run it to make sure that everything's fine. Build and run it. There you go. So hello constructor here, dummy attribute one equals to zero, dummy attribute equals to do second constructor here, param equals one hundred, attribute one is one hundred, and attribute two is p. Just the way we have configured it above. Okay, so we can see that we can initialize attributes inside constructors too. Let's skip to our class, let's skip to our uh, class date. We declared the variables of type date as basically as date space dt semicolon if you remember. We can pull it up from before. If you have it saved, it would be very nice. Uh, we did not have to initialize. We did not have. We did not have the initial state of the object dt. That is, we did not have the initial date. So, which date should be the initial when declaring the variable of type date? Well, I don't know. You can set the current date of today is not bad or you can do something else with it. It doesn't really matter, but as long as you can have something there that's that has some sort of logic. In the next in the uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to have a look at class date and we're going to play around with it a little bit. So if you have it and I'm pretty sure that you do, feel free to grab it. Otherwise, you can just follow along as well. I you will see it on the screen anyway. Bid you farewell and hope to see you in the follow-up.